What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the flood fill tool and the fill tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're talking all about the flood fill tool and the fill tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Now, the reason we're talking about these two tools together instead of in separate videos is because I think people searching the internet are probably looking for how to use both of them and might be confused about which one to use when because they're named things that are so close together that it can be really confusing. So let's go ahead and jump on the iPad and let's learn all about the flood fill tool and the fill tool in Affinity Photo. All right, so here we are in Affinity Photo on the iPad and the flood fill tool and the fill tool are actually the fifth and sixth tools down on the left hand side. So they look like a paint bucket and like a low line passing through a gradient. And the first thing that you're going to want to know is the difference between these tools and that's why I put them together is because I think a lot of people will probably get confused about them. The flood fill tool, this paint bucket, acts a lot more like you would expect a fill tool to work. It floods an area with your chosen color. So let's just go to our color panel and select a color that will be easy to see. Let's go ahead and choose magenta. When we click it, it's going to flood an area. So you can kind of see what happens there. I'm going to go ahead and tap with two fingers to undo that. And this is very similar to what you might have expected if you grew up using something like Microsoft Paint and the paint bucket tool in that one. The fill tool, on the other hand, is somewhat misnamed as it really is a gradient tool. So if I click that one, I'm going to click and drag and it's going to make a gradient across my entire layer or selection if I have something selected. Like I said, this would be more appropriately probably called the gradient tool, except it does have some other fill options. And there are even places in Affinity's documentation where they call it the gradient tool. So it can be a little confusing. So those are the differences. Now let's get in and look at each one. Now this is going to be a bit of a longer tools video because we're kind of out of the simple tools now and we're getting into things that are more complex. They have more options and because we're doing two of them, this video will be a little longer, but hopefully it will kind of help you understand them. So first let's go back to the flood fill tool. And like I said, when you tap, it's just going to use your fill color, whatever you have selected in your color studio to fill an area. And it's going to choose that area based on what it thinks are things of the same color. So when I tap here, it's going to fill everything that's kind of that whitish gray color there in the middle of the screen. If I tap over here where things are a little bit more yellow, it's going to try and do that, but you can see it's not great because it's like picking up a lot of grays. And if I open up my layers panel, you can see that this is happening on the layer. So this is actually a destructive edit, which we don't want to do. So we'll talk about that more as we get into the options. But let's look at this context toolbar down at the bottom and you can see there are two modes. We've been in fill mode, but there's actually an erase mode as well. So you can tap that and see both of them or you can use the arrows to click back and forth between them. Erase is actually going to get rid of the pixels. So let's go ahead and see what that one does. Okay, so you can see I now have this area of transparent pixels because they've actually been deleted. So that's obviously destructive, which is why I don't really recommend doing that. That's more something that's better done with a mask. Then we have another important one, which is the source options. So you can see currently we're on current layer, but we really want to be on current layer or below or layers beneath because that's where it's going to look for the similar colors to fill. So let's say that I did want to fill all of the white gray sky with magenta, but I didn't want to destroy my layer. I can make a new layer by hitting plus in my layers panel and choosing pixel layer. And now that I have current layers and below, it's going to sample from the layer I'm on and also the layers that are beneath it. So change this to fill. And then when I tap here, it's still going to fill it, right? But it's filling on this pixel layer up here. And that's much better because I can always turn that layer off and I still have my picture. So that's a non-destructive edit. So generally speaking, you'll always want to be doing this on a new pixel layer. And that will just make things much easier and safer for you. So let me undo that again. We have this tolerance level. And the tolerance level is going to determine how close it looks for similarities between the pixels that it's filling. So if the tolerance level is really high, it will fill almost everything. In this case, 100, it does everything. You can see that if I come down to 50 and tap, it fills a lot because it's looking for a wide range of color. Whereas if I bring this down to zero, it's going to fill nothing. Let's bring it up to just like 10. Okay, so it's looking for things that are much closer together. So you can adjust the tolerance accordingly. The next thing is contiguous. So contiguous says that the pixels have to be touching in order to be filled. And if there isn't a touching way, then it won't fill them. But when you turn contiguous off, it's just a toggle. 
When you click that, then it can fill other areas. So let's raise our tolerance up a bit. We have contiguous turned off and it will fill various areas. So you can see what's happening here in the water. Those areas are not connected to the sky, but it's still filling some of them in because it thinks they're the same color and it doesn't need to be contiguous. Okay, the last thing here for the flood fill tool is the blend mode. So this will actually set the blend mode of the fill. Now this is only going to work if you're doing a destructive edit on the layer. So let me show you. I'm gonna change this blend mode to multiply. And then when I click, you can see that it's actually choosing to multiply things. So it's not that straight magenta hue because it's multiplying what's underneath it. So you can set your blend mode, but the problem is that's destructive. So it's better to just set this to normal Go onto your blank pixel layer, click, and then choose multiply from your layers menu. There you go. You get very similar results without the destructive edit because we can always go into our layers panel and just turn that off. Okay, let's go ahead and delete that layer. And that is how the flood fill tool works in Affinity Photo. Now let's go and look at the fill tool, which like I said, is more like a gradient. First, we'll just look at what it looks like to use it. So let's make a new layer so that we are being non-destructive here. And we just click and drag across. It starts off with a simple black to white gradient. So you come here, you can see that is currently black. And we can change these colors by clicking on one of these dots. This one's white. And let's say I wanted to bring in my magenta and then if I want to change this one to green, just change that to my green. Then we have this little bar in the middle which allows us to adjust where the blend is at. So normally it's right in the middle, but we can adjust that. The other thing you can do is you can add more color spots. So by clicking in between that middle point and one of the color dots, you can add in a new one. And then with that one selected, you can make it a new color. So let's say we made it orange. You can add in as many of these as you want and change the different colors. And of course, each one of those gets a midpoint, which can then be adjusted. Okay, so that is fairly straightforward. That's how you can create a gradient here. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the context menu options. And these might get a little confusing, but we'll try and make it as straightforward as possible. Let's go ahead and turn off this layer. So we have fill context, which is telling you that it's going to apply the gradient to the fill. And then we have line context, which says it's going to apply the gradient to the line. The line context is a little bit hard to understand because there isn't like a stroke studio in Affinity Photo. And so it's a little bit weird how you get to even use that. So I'll show you. First, I'm going to draw a rectangle, okay? And from the rectangle, so select the rectangle, and then the only way to add a stroke that I can find is to actually go to your pen tool, and then you have a width option. So I can make the width, and this is the color of the stroke, so I can select the color. But if I then go to my gradient tool, and I change this to line context instead of fill, I can then apply a gradient to this line. And it's going to act like any other gradient, it's just only applying to the line. But if I want to then apply one to the fill, I can switch to the fill, and I can apply another gradient to the fill. So that's just how that works. But again, it's weird because the only way to adjust that line is to go to the pen tool. And it only works on like shapes and you can kind of do it with text, but it's a little bit buggy that way. So it's very limited and I'm not even quite sure why it's there if they aren't going to provide a stroke tool. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this shape. For the rest of this, we're not going to need a shape here. Let's go back to our gradient tool. Let's make sure that we are back on our layer here. And you can see we now have the option to choose our type of fill. So we have solid, so that is probably why it's called the fill tool because it can do a solid. The other ones here, except for this last one, bitmap, are actually all gradients, which is why I still think it should be called the gradient tool. So there's linear, which is what we saw before, simple. And then there is elliptical, which gives you three points here, one on each end and then one in the middle. And then there is radial, which is similar to elliptical, except it's just a straight radius coming out from the center. And then there is conical, which gives you, let me scale this down so you can see it better, which gives you a number of different points to kind of have it go from to create a cone effect. And then there is bitmap, and bitmap is not a gradient. Bitmap will let you select one of your other pictures to be the fill. So you can select this and it will fill it. And then you have options to adjust this. So I'm showing you bitmap here so you can see what happens when we click the next button, which is rotate. And you can see hopefully, if it's showing up, that that bitmap is rotating. You can also do this with gradients. So we have like the elliptical gradient here, and we can rotate that. And you can also do it with the linear, which can be rotated 90 degrees. And then you have the option to reverse the gradient. Let me just add some color in here so that this is a little bit easier to see. Pink, green. 
And when you click reverse, it will just switch the direction of the gradient. So that can be useful if you put it in wrong. The next one, which is aspect, can only apply to things with two points coming off. So that's either the elliptical one, because there are two points here. So you can actually keep the aspect ratio the same by making sure that toggle is turned on. Then they'll stay the same, whereas if it's off, you can move these independent. Or the bitmap one. Since it has two points, you can have that aspect ratio on to keep your bitmap texture the same, or you can turn it off to adjust them separately. That's basically the X and Y coordinates there. So that's what the aspect ratio is for. And then lastly, you have the delete button. And this delete button can be used for a couple different things. Let's switch back to a linear here. And if we have multiple points along here and we are selected on one, we can hit delete to get rid of those points. But once we don't have multiple points anymore, when we hit delete, it will actually delete the entire fill. So now that fill is gone. And so that's every button that we have along here. You can see it then switches it to a fill of none, which we can come back by then adding in another fill option. Okay, so that is a real quick tutorial on the flood fill tool and the fill tool, which should more accurately be called the gradient tool. Now, in practice, I don't find that I use these tools a lot for filling things, but I do find them to be kind of useful when you are creating masks. We can go ahead and add a mask layer, and then on the mask layer, we can use our gradient tool to create a gradient. And the reason this is really useful is because you can use white and black and shades of gray to allow different things to come through. And so you can see, I can adjust this, right? If I want that whole sky to be really in, I can do that. But if I want it to be more transparent, I can drag it up like this. And so using black and white on a gradient can be really useful when you are trying to mask different effects or things like that. So let me give you a better example. Let's delete the mask here. And we'll go ahead and we'll apply an adjustment layer. All right, so let's put this black and white adjustment layer on. And then on this black and white adjustment layer, I can apply a gradient here and you can see that it changes. So I have color down at the bottom and it's black and white on the top. So that can be a really useful thing to do. Let me undo that. So with the fill tool, this can be very useful because you can select certain areas, but you wanna make sure that you're using the right color, right? So remember that black conceals and white reveals. So we wanna conceal this. So if I just want this to be color, I'm gonna fill this with the fill tool. And you can see that then my color starts coming out here in certain areas. Now this is not a perfect example, but you can see how this might be useful. So if you come in here and you look at our black and white adjustment layer, you can kind of see what's happening there. And so using these fill tools, it can seem like, well, they're just there to like make specific fills, but when you start thinking about them and apply them to masks, that's when they can really, I think, become even more useful. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video, learning all about the flood fill tool and the fill tool in Infinity Photo. If you have, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and remember, you can always click that thanks button if you've really enjoyed my videos. Of course, I have courses that you can get to down below for all of the Affinity programs, including Affinity Photo on the iPad. And I've got this whole series of videos that we're working through Affinity Photo and a whole series of videos that are already done working through Affinity Designer. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.